Let's now revisit lecture number four on recursion. And we got three more problems that we I want to go over, namely the Merck sort, quick sort, and also the Tower of Hanoi. And given that we still got three more weeks for the semester, so we can definitely cover one problem each week, which will give you time to really digest about the design rationale, the problem, and also the solution in Java, and also running time analysis. You can definitely study each of the problems carefully. They are all important to, for your understanding about recursion. Let's now, this week, let's now go over merge sort. And we are really trying to solve the so-called sorting problem, which we already went over when we spoke about the selection sort and insertion sort earlier. But let's just brush up about what the problem is. Given a list of n numbers, so we simply index the number by a1, a2, all the way to an. What could be a, uh, a0, a1, all the way to an minus 1, doesn't matter. And the list over here can be a singly linked list, can be a doubly linked list, or it can be an array. So the actual data structure for the list is not really the focus point, but we want to focus more on idea first, and then we'll choose one of the data structure to implement the list. In this case, I'm going to choose the array list uh, from the Java library, just for illustration. And so that'll be the input. What kind of a condition do we have for the precondition for the input? Well, luckily, none. Meaning that you can just give you can just be given arbitrary list which may or may not be sorted. In that case, the output or the post condition would be to really sort it. We want to have a permutation, meaning that we don't want to lose any values from the input array. It should still be the same set of values that's really in the input. However, we want to somehow sort them or rearrange them in a way that's going to be on non-descending order. If you have any doubts about what non-descending really means, you can refer to the earlier lecture uh, when we talk about the selection sort and insertion sort we introduced about the terminology over there. So that's about the input and output conditions. And it's been a while since we mentioned about precondition and postcondition. Just don't forget. So these are important concepts for you to design your algorithm. And what about some recursive algorithm for the merge sort? Let's talk about base cases first. Base cases are usually easier to understand, but it's also foundational for us to know how they should be handled. If you're given an empty list, meaning that you have nothing to sort, in that case, it's automatically sorted. It's a very important base case, even though it's trivial. The second base case is, what if the list contains only one element, meaning that the size or the length of the list is simply just one? In that case, also, you don't need to do any work it's also automatically sorted. So these are the two important base cases you want to keep in mind. Whenever we talk about any sorting problem, namely selection sort, insertion sort, merge sort, and also later on quick sort, and also heap sort. So these are all the sorting algorithm that we're going to cover in the course. They all share the same base cases. Whenever you got empty collection or empty list, or whenever you got any uh, list of size one, you don't need to do any work. In that case, you can return right away for the result. The sorting is simply just done. And what's left is about how we handle the recursive case. This will this will be how we distinguish between different sorting algorithm. Let's now talk about the merge sort. And for this part here, I just want to go over with you some high level conceptual sketch about how the algorithm will should really proceed in different phases. And then we're going to go on to the Java implementation. That'll be the plan. All right, so let's now talk about this. So we already handled the base cases. So this is really like a recursive case for the merge sort, the algorithm. Think about what we're doing is this. Conceptually, what we really want to do is we want to call the sort routine, or like a method, on this particular input array. Let's talk about array or list, doesn't matter conceptually, right? And we want to call this sort method and the input is simply just a list or an array. And the size, uh, let's say talk about indices will be from zero until the size minus one, very standard. The idea would be we want to somehow split the list or the array. Let me just say list from now on. We want to split the list into half on this point here. You can think about, we're going to say the size of the list divided by two, right? You can uh, think about this is how we calculate. You can say the middle of the list. You can think about the middle, similar to how we did binary search. Middle would just be the size of the list divided by two. And then, so you can think about it's around this point over here, size divided by two. This is about the point, okay? This is about, uh, about the middle. And then from, from there, we're actually going to, 
Okay, let me put it here. And from there, we're going to divide the list into two parts. This will be so-called the left part, which is unsorted. And also, this will be the right part, which is unsorted as well. Right? Remember, the list that's given as input may or may not be sorted. So let's just simply assume it's completely unsorted. So that'll be uh, helpful for us to come up with the worst case running time later. So what I will do is I'm going to now do the following. The first step is to try to do some split. And the split itself is rather easy. You just have to calculate what the middle index is and then split them into two. And you can definitely use some helper method that's actually from the library class in our example. But of course, if you are not really allowed to use library classes, you can simply use a loop to come up with what should be the left half and what should be the right half. That's something uh, I'll let you fill, the, uh, fill out the gap for the implementation. All right, so what's gonna happen after the split? After the slip split, conceptually think about we have two arrays or two lists, two sub lists over here. So what will be over here? And for this one, let me call it the left. And we got another one over here, a separate list. So that's why I'm trying to draw them separately. And this will be the right. But there's one thing I'll let it clarify. We don't necessarily have to create two brand new list objects over here. So when I say split, just conceptually, you should think about the original one list is somehow split into two lists over here. All right, that's something I want to clarify right away. So we got the left. And also we got a right. So that'll be the after the first step, which is called a split. What about the second step? The second step will be given that we are trying to somehow sort them. So we should really somehow make a recursive call because it's a recursive algorithm. And the way to do it is we're going to recursively sort the left and the right independently. Okay, so you're going to say sort recursively. Okay, so how is that gonna work? We're going to call the same method over here, which is called a sort on the left and on the right. That's what we're gonna do. And the way to do it is, we, I'm going to say over here, the sort is actually going to call on the left. And also the sort is actually going to recursively call on the right. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, let's now try that. So the left over here, I'm simply just going to make it as an argument over here in the sort, okay? And also for the right, I'm also going to put it over here, okay? Like that. After these two recursive calls, we should really get a sublist that's sorted and another sub list that's sorted. We are not quite there solving the problem completely because our original problem is to sort the entire list. But what we got instead is two sub lists being sorted, but we're getting there. What we gotta do is to merge these two sorted lists. That's why we, it's called merge sort. Before I move on to these steps, let me make some room for myself so I can fit in the remaining several steps. Let's now do that. Okay, let me just make this smaller over here. Okay, I think uh, this should be good. Okay, awesome. Okay, it's definitely still readable. All right, so as I said, we're going to create two sub lists being sorted, and then so they will be sorted afterwards. So what's going to happen is we're going to result in two sub lists over here. So this will result in. sorted sub lists okay yeah let's draw that it's going to be this one over here I'm just going to use green to really represent it's actually sorted that means it's kind of the similar color convention where we spoke about insertion sort and selection sort okay so these two lists are actually sorted I would say sorted L and sorted R over here. So these two lists are actually sorted and we are only one step away from sorting the entire list because all the lists, all the elements over here, union with all the elements over here should be equal to the entire original list. But all we gotta do is we're gonna merge them, right? So what we'll do is the final step. We want to merge. 
merge the two sorted sublists over here. And after that, we should be able to get a list that's really of the original size. All right, so this will be the sorted. Let's uh, let me recap what's really happening over here. But before that, let me highlight we got the results in two sorted sublists, and also we want to merge the two sublists in order to handle the recursive case for the sorting problem uh, for the sorting solution. The merge store go uh, goes as follows. Given this original list, we actually want to call the sort routine, right? So that that'll be the top level call. So that'll be the sort. In order to do that, we want to simply split from the middle point into two sublists and these two sublists are simply just uh, unsorted right so the convention is i simply put it in red over here so this is unsorted and this one also is unsorted and what we want to do is we want to recursively call the sort routine on the left half and also on the right half so after trying to sort this unsorted list and also trying to sort this unsorted half what we will get is we're going to get the sorted left half and also sorted right half and then after this we're going to merge them together using some merge routine which i'm going to show to you in java okay after this we're going to get this one over here overall we are really trying to do the following you can think about the original list is really unsorted started started with this and we're going from here to over here with this many steps that's what we're doing and that's really the conceptual meaning for merge sort of course you really want to be careful about where the recursive call is made is made over here and also over here that's really the way the recursion uh, comes from all right it's a very quick conceptual sketch about how the merge sort actually works you can just try to understand what's really going on you can even imagine how the java code is going to look like it's going to correspond to exactly the steps i'm having explaining over here